Today is the uh, 6th of April 1994 and uh, I'd like to take up two subjects the first of which is the subject of erasability and uh, later on I want to take up the subject of the philosophy of TROM. We are now in a position, a very fortunate position, to be able to finalise this subject of the erasability of junior universes at level 5C, to finalise it once and for all. I, I, I can say now with, with, with great certainty that, uh, that this, this area is now explored completely and, and finally. Here then is the uh, here then is the data. Any junior universe, repeat, any junior universe can be erased from the mind at level 5C. The reason for this is very, 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 very simple. If the if the thing if the if the universe has an existence in the universe, then it's erasable at level 5C. It can be made the subject matter of the to know goals package at level 5C and erased. Now, now why, why, why is this? Well, it's to do with a little identification that belongs to the belongs in this universe. It's to do with the uh, to do with the basic law upon which this universe is is, is evidently uh, evidently built. The identification is that that the the that the, the the idea, the concept of an existence is identical t to the concept of must be known. The concept of, of existence and the concept of must be known are I are identical concepts. In other words, if a thing exists in the universe, it must be known in the universe. And if a th thing must be known in the universe, then it exists in the universe. That this is an identification. And also we have that if a thing doesn't exist in the universe, then it's, it mustn't be known. And if it mustn't be known in the universe, then it doesn't exist in the universe. Again, it's this, this proposition, these propositions derive from the basic law upon which this universe is based. Just to briefly remind you of the basic law, the basic law states that the class of the knowable is coextensive with the class of those things brought into existence to be known. That is the basic law upon which this universe is constructed. And we can deduce from this basic law, I won't go into the logic of how of the, the mechanics of, of, of how this could be done in logic, but I can assure you that we can validly deduce from that law this idea that the concept of existence is identical to the concept of be known, and the concept of non-existence is identical to the concept of not be known or be not known. And from this state of affairs, from this state of affairs, we can say with great certainty that any existence and a junior universe is an existence. Any junior, so any junior universe can be erased from the mind by making it the subject matter of the to know goals package at level 5C. Now, the only thing that can prevent the erasure is that the junior universe has become ionized with one or other legs of a junior gold package. Now that's that's the datum we didn't have. That that, that this is the, that's the new datum. Well, once you grasp this, you'll you'll, you'll you'll get the whole picture. The only interfering factor is this subject of the junior universes. It, Sorry, the only the only interfering factor is the subject of the junior gold package. If a junior universe has no um, no inter there's no interference, if the junior universe is not interfered uh, with or is not involved with in games play with with some junior gold package, then it will it will erase readily at level five C by making it the, the uh, subject matter of the to no goals package at level 5C. You, you, you see that. But if that junior universe 
is interfered with or is involved in games play with some junior goals package which is then considered independent of the basic package that's important it's then considered to be independent of the basic package then when you come at level 5c to try and erase this junior universe it won't erase at level 5c because of the interfering interference it's getting from the junior goals package I'll, I'll give you an example of this and you'll see it very very clearly now let's take the subject of the, the junior universe of a dress dress you know what goes where D R E S S a dress now un undoubtedly there are some people that would um, that would get to level 5c and say okay well I'll just uh, I'll raise the uh, the junior universe of address and make it the subject matter of the to know goals package and it, and it erases like a lamb now one thing we know about these people is that they have not been playing games with dresses and they have not got the, the subject of address they have not got this junior universe of address um, ironized by, with any of the legs of a junior goals package you follow that? we know that immediately otherwise it, it simply would derise but others people will get to level 5c try and erase the junior universal dress and it won't erase so they have to say well now we have to then ask as we know as I've given you on earlier material um, earlier lectures and in the main write up there we'll have to say well what is the purpose what is the function of a dress See, what we're hunting for is the junior is the junior goals package here, you see. We're looking for the junior goals package that's interfering. When we ask for the function, we're asking for a, for, for a junior goals package, aren't we? See that? It's a sneaky way to ask for it. We ask for the function of the dress. And uh, the person writes down the functions of the dress. And he only has to look at the dress and he will get the functions you see he doesn't have to, doesn't have to go hunting very far he only has to look at the dress and there's the ironization of the dress so he says well now with the femininity dress is associated with feminine it's got a feminine function he would say it's got a feminine function the person would say a dress has in our society he's reading it off the dress you see he's picking up the, uh, the feminine ironization of, of the garment you see because it's, it's, it's got a feminine usage and it all, an exclusive feminine usage in our society see that but what's the, what is the ionization here well the ionization is, is the must be sex postulate the dress has got the is ionized must be sex and um, and the must be sex postulate of course is a postulate from the to sex goals package and the person has got the to sex goals package considered as independent of the to know goals package and bingo <laughs> he can't erase the dress at level 5c by making it the subject matter of the to know goals package see that so he has to now get down knuckle down and, and erase the to sex goals package <laughs> To, to break the interference he gets that erased and then he, he has to do all the checks which I've given you on the earlier lectures he then has to rerun re re it again at level make it the subject matter of the to no goals make it level 5 seat check that it will if it will now erase if it doesn't he has to go and find another purpose of address until eventually he goes back and it, it erases he now got rid of all the purposes but the purposes show as ionization of the junior universe and just to refresh you to refresh your mind on the subject of ionization which I have covered on an earlier lecture which is to, re to refresh you that when we say ionization we simply mean the, the flooding of a mass with a postulate that's what we mean when we say ionization we're, we're flooding a mass with a postulate so if a dress has a must be sex ionization well it simply all we mean when we say that is that the dress is flooded with a must be sex postulate which is, which is the feminine uh, feminine sex, sexual postulate which is uh, what you would expect if the uh, if the dress is uh, so closely associated with the, with, with the females it would uh, would pick up the ionization of their of their primary uh, of their primary sexual postulate which it does <laughs> it does see that so it's a, it's a see it in terms of ionization and you understand it you understand how the, the, the where it picks up the function from 
uh, and there's, you don't have to go hunting for the uh, for the ionisation. So, well, well, what's the ionisation of this junior universe? You've only got to look at the junior universe and read it off the junior universe. It's right there when you look at the junior universe, if you know what to look for. Yes, the, the, the simplest way to... Uh, uh, the simplest way to, to, to handle it if you can't read the ionisation directly off the junior universe and, and you, 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 sh you will be able to do this by the time you, you've got, got, a, got a fair way through level 5 I can assure you the subject of ionisation gets very very real to you but if you can't read the ionisation well you simply ask what is the function of the dress well, when you list the function of the dress you, you'll, you'll, pick it, you'll pick up the ionisation there's two ways you can do it. You can either read the ionisation directly off, or off the junior universe, or you can simply look at the junior universe and, and um, uh, well, you either read it directly off the junior universe, or you, you just uh, say, well, what's the function of the junior universe? One way or the other, you'll get you'll get it. You'll get the ionisations, and then you just apply the technologies I've given it, and the uh, and uh, then eventually you'll get the you'll get the dress erased. Do you see that? Now, this is what we mean by erasability. Now, now there's one final thing I have to tell you on this subject. It's a dreadful pitfall. It's one I fell into, and I had enormous trouble with it. And it's one way to generate an enormous amount of mass in your mind, and um, <laughs> which is terribly difficult to get rid of. And uh, it's one way to uh, get yourself in an awful mess and um, is to try and play with this idea that you could make a junior universe the subject matter of a junior goals package. I can tell you now with utter certainty and absolute conviction that you can't. The, the car. The, you can't make any junior universe the subject matter of any junior gold package. You just can't do it. Now, why can't you do it? Okay, I, I didn't know this until recently, but I've now got got the whole. As I say, I've got the whole got the whole thing out now. I now know why you can't do it. But this is the way it goes. To be erasable within a gold package, the junior universe has to only consist of the two postulates the of the to be blank and to not be blank postulates on, the, on that side of the girls package if, if a junior universe only consists of those two things those two postulates the, of a junior universe then it could be made the subject matter of that junior universe and would erase. Now that is a, that is a true a true true technical datum, but unfortunately the only goals package repeat the only goals package of which this is true is the to know goals package, because the junior universe is an existence, and because of the identification between existence and be known and non-existence and not be known that, that, that's an identification in the, in the universe itself based upon the, um, the the basic law of the universe because of this, this, this peculiar identification there it's, oh, any junior universe exists that exists in this universe it's erasable within that to know goals package and it's not erasable within any other junior goals package the simple truth of the matter is that none of the junior goals packages have this identification like we have in the basic package. In the basic package, we have the identification between existence and be known. You see that? Well, none of the junior packages have this identification. So you can't make them. <laughs> you can't. You can't get any erasure of a junior universe by making it the subject matter of one of these junior goals packages. You see that? I'll give you an example. Let's take the to go back. We're dealing with the dress and the to sex goals package. You think, well, there might be various things which could be made the subject matter of the to sex goals package. Well, as a matter of fact, there aren't any junior universes which can be made the subject matter of the to sex goals package. You say, well, that's peculiar. Um, 
are there anything isn't there anything in the universe that is sexable yes <laughs> but the only thing that's <laughs> the only thing in this universe which is essentially which is truly sexual it, it's truly um, that can truly be sexed I should say is the to be sex postulate <laughs> everything else is not quite right I used to think when I first researched the sex goes back is that the uh, that the junior um, junior universe of female sex cells was erasable within the sex goes package but it took me a month or two of fiddling around with it to realize that they weren't erasing <laughs> nothing was erasing I was just getting a lot of mass showing up it all it all looked very significant and uh, but the end point was I, I got absolutely nowhere and I had to abandon it it was just another interesting way to generate mass so that, that one fell away. Then I thought, well, the, the junior universe of femininity. God, that ought to be. That ought to be erasable within the, the uh, to sex girls package. No, nope, again, it isn't quite right. Femininity isn't exactly sexable. It isn't exactly sexable. It's not exactly sexable. The only thing in this universe that is, is exactly sexable is the to be sex postulate. Get it? So, whatever junior universe you, you make the subject matter of the to sex goals package won't work. You won't get an erasure. <laughs> See that? The only thing you can erase in the to sex goals package, in other words, are the four postures of the package. They would erase one against the other. And the whole package will go. But to try and use the package as, a, as, a, as an erasure tool at level 5C gets you into, an, into the soup, gets you into a hole, gets you into a mess. And the reason why is the reason why I've just given you. Is that there's no, the only identification between a junior universe and and a gold package is on is in the to no gold package with this identification between the junior universe of existence and the to be known postulate and that is a true identification in this universe and because of that and because the junior universe if it exists if it exists it's, it's an existence in the universe once it exists it's erasable within the confines of the to no goals package and it's only erasable within the confines of the to no goals package so one gorgeous way to booby trap this whole subject is to get in and say, well, now we can we can make junior universes the subject matter of uh, junior goals packages. No, nope, you get nowhere, and you just get eventually you just pile up more and more lies. It's a lie, you see. You're just peddling the lie, and you just pile up more mass, more mass, more mass, and in the end you just go the effect is the same effect as if you were trying to erase an unerasable goals package it's slower but the effect eventually is the same you would you you would just dig yourself a hole in, in, the, in the graveyard and get into it there's no no way out that way so that, that, that's my final words on the subject bear, bear them bear them very carefully in mind you won't find any in the write-up of, of Tron you won't find any reference to making junior universes the subject of junior girls packages and now we know the reason why I knew it then, I knew you couldn't do it but I didn't know why you couldn't do it now I know why you can't do it so I'm giving you the reasons why so don't fall into that trap it, it, it's, a, it's a yawning chasm for the unwary it's the subject of uh, junior making junior universes the subject matter of the junior girls packages so don't do it ok you erase junior universes at level 5 so exactly as per the way I've given you in the write up and, um, um, and the supplementary material in the supplementary tapes well actually it's in the write up it's, it's in the main write up there's sufficient data in the main write up to do it all, all, the, all the supplementary tapes give you is the, is the reasons why and, and amplifies the material and points out the points out the booby traps. So the the final message on the subject is 
don't don't fall for this. don't fall in any way for any idea of uh, don't think there's any quick way of erasing junior universes in the in the junior goals packages it's a booby trap there's no way out that way the only way it can be done is the way i've given you there isn't any other way to do it and i can prove it and almost as a postscript on the subject of erasing um, junior universes at level 5c don't forget the data about snooze of the cat do you remember i said early on in the right up there that uh, the tendency is you pick you tend to pick something a little bit too tough to handle so don't be surprised that uh, even even though you've uh, you, you, you've uh, erased all the junior universe sorry even though you've erased all the junior goals packages associated with a, a junior universe at level 5c and you've cleaned up all the all its ionizations and you've, you've got it all ready to go it still won't erase it's just a little bit too tough to erase for you. Well, remember snooze of the cat. Get inside it. You remember I said in the write-up, snooze of the cat. If you can't erase snooze of the cat, well, we'll settle for his whiskers and work through the cat bit by bit because you've got the whole lot erased. You can always do that too. But do that after you've, you've cleaned up the, um, the uh, ionizations and cleaned up the functions of the junior universe. Get, that, get the functions cleaned up first. And then it then, and if necessary, and it's still too tough to erase at level five C. Or then get inside it, like treat it, treat it like treat it like snooze of the cat, and get get inside it and erase it a bit at a time. One way or the other, you'll you'll get there. You'll get there. But I can tell you now, you'll never get there. Never ever get there once you get involved with this idea, this crazy idea of uh, making junior universes the subject matter of junior goals packages there's no future in it
Hello Anthony, Dennis Stevens here and uh, very pleased to receive your your very welcome tape on the, well, I received it this morning as a matter of fact. Oh, from long, long experience Anthony, I can tell you one thing you, you, you're well advised against doing when working with tapes, corresponding by tape, and that is to put one's reply over the, the letter you're replying to. I've got myself into some god-awful difficulties doing that in the past. And I've stopped doing it these days. I, I simply don't do it. What I do, I set up the, uh, I set up the, the, the tape I'm replying to in a recorder. I've had two recorders. I set up the uh, tape I'm replying to in one recorder and, pl and play through it. And then, then I'll reply to it using the other recorder and a microphone. It's similar, you know, I use exactly the same system as I would do if I had good eyesight and um, was replying to a letter, I would simply put the letter in front of me I'm replying to and and, and rep reply to the letter as I work, work my way through the letter and reply to it. Do the same thing with tape. I can assure you it is the, it is the best way. It is the best way in the long run. I, I felt for you when you got halfway through and you said, no, what, what, I've got a note here somewhere. I, I knew what you'd done. I knew exactly what you'd done. <laughs> you'd, you'd made notes, yes, <laughs> and then you got through the notes and you say, oh, I wonder what I meant when I wrote that. Yes, I know. <laughs> I, know what you, I know what you're up against. Yes, it's, it's best in the long run to keep two tapes going. <laughs> then, of course, you can always, uh, like this time I'm erasing. Now, I'm erasing over my first tape to you, you see. <laughs> Then, uh, then when I've finished, I'll simply dub it and dolbyize it at the same time onto another piece of tape and send send that to you. Mm. You see that? Um, my system also has one other advantage: is that I I do keep a file copy of uh, of the tape. Now, the only unfortunate thing about all this is that the philosophy doesn't become particularly real to a person until they get into level five. And level five is a fair way up the line for the average person in therapy. It may not be far up the line for a person who's had a lot of Scientology auditing. They may get to level five within, oh, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 hours of running silo. I may get there. That would be unusual. But uh, it's possible. But a person who's uh, never had any psychotherapy, it's going to take them longer than that to get up to level five. And it's no good rushing it. They're not going to do any good on level five until they're ready for it. So they've got to work through the steps. And so it's just unfortunate that our philosophy, the, the that we're taught the philosophy of trauma is based upon material which is going to be a little bit unreal to people until they've got to the upper levels of our subject. Now that is unfortunate. I wish it wasn't that way. But unfortunately I, I, can't, I can't make it any other way than it is. We, we, can't run our, we can't run our tech any other way. It doesn't run any other way got to do levels one, two, three, four, five in that sequence. You might say the, the fault lies in the fact that, that the humans on this planet are in such goddamn lousy case shape. If they were in better case shape, they could get on to level five rather quickly. You see that? That's the problem. The, the fault lies not in our tech, but in the material we're having to apply the tech to. <laughs> so it's not a, it's not a, it's not a technical failure. It's just that uh, that the, the people of Earth, of, uh, the people of this planet, the humans, have, have um, never really taken much thought on the subject of their state of their case. Good little compulsive games players that they are, they're all they're always much more concerned with um, what's going on out that way rather than what's going concerned with what's going on inside them. <laughs> There, you know, they. You always know the compulsive games player is that he he always looks exterior to himself for the solutions to his problems. This is almost a definition of a compulsive games player. 
You know them by that, know them by that. They, they look exterior to themselves for the solutions to their problems. They never look into themselves to solve their problems. They always look for the quick fix out that way. That's the compulsive games player. The non-compulsive games player, he doesn't, he doesn't live his life like that. He, he, he may look outside his exterior to himself for the solution to his problem, but he's just as likely to look inside himself for the solution to his problem. He may use either. He has the choice. He can do both. That, that differentiates it. So when you come across that, when you come across a person who endlessly looks exterior to themselves for the solution of their problems, know that this person is a compulsive game player. And this person is going to take a fair while on the, on the earlier steps of Tron before they can get up to level 5. They're just not going to get up to level 5 until they've broken this pattern. They've got to start looking at themselves. They've got to start um, working through these lower steps. And that means looking at themselves. They're going to have to break this lifelong habit of the quick fix over that way. The quick fix over that way. They go for the long-term fix over this way, not the quick fix over that way. That's Trump. Another way you can tell the the uh, compulsive game player is the amount of he he needs to be stimulated by his environment. The amount of stimulation he needs from the environment. Compulsive games player has a tremendous need to be stimulated by his environment, where the non-compulsive games player has, has far, far less need to be stimulated by his environment. And by the time he's finished the five levels of Tron, his need to be stimulated by the, by the environment is very tiny indeed, and it's completely under his control. Completely under his control. So there's two quick indicators for the compulsive uh, game player, just given to you in passing. Is the uh, the quick fix over that way, always looking exterior to himself for the solution to his problems, and uh, a high need to be stimulated by the environment, and uh, uh, and so on. You, you see that they're quick, they're quick indicators of the compulsive. Uh, compulsive games player and the higher that compulsion of games play is the more they're going to have time they're going to have to spend on the lower levels of Trom the more they're going to have to sweat at levels 2 and 3 of Trom 2, 3, 4 but mainly 2 and 3 the, the compulsive games player has a rough time at level 2 he really does that, that's the one it's, as I said on the write up it separates the men from the boys and uh, that's 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 the one that sorts them out. Sorts out that the the compulsive games player is level two. The non-compulsive games player sails through levels levels two and three quite comfortably. But the non the compulsive games player has a lot of trouble because he, they, they they make him look inwards. They make him look at his mind. And that's the one thing he he, he will not do. He's all looking exterior to himself for a quick fix to his problems. And level two won't let him do that. It simply says, look at your mind. Let's evaluate these things in your mind. Let's start looking at your postulates, your considerations, what your, what your structure of your mind that you're working on. Let's look at these things. Not, look, keep, not keep looking out that way to a, to a fix for your problems. Let's fix them. You fix them. <laughs> your mind, you fix them. That's Trump. But to return to our main, our main line, which is this subject of the uh, philosophy of Tron and the subject of the, of the goals packages, don't miss it that our philosophy of Tron is governed by the data at level 5. Governed by the data at level 5 and the goals packages. It, it completely dominates the philosophy of Tron. Completely dominates it. And the only other philosophy of Tron would be what you will find in Scientology. You know, the, the general, what might be called the background philosophy, which is common to Scientology and Tron. 
but the, the, the philosophy that differentiates Trom from Scientology is the philosophy that comes from the gold packages at level 5 and um, once the person gets to level 5 they um, they can easily uh, we have all the tests for the unerosable goals package at level 5b the, you know is the what well, other the test is there you know is it opposed is the to blank leg of the goal opposed to the to be known leg of the basic package that's the first test it's a very fundamental test that's the first test any person will use when they get to level 5 later on is the ionization test which I've covered in the supplementary lectures where the people will discover the ionization test for themselves I mean the ionization test is the subject of ionization is very very, very, very simple but um, it. yeah it's just briefly to, to reiterate the ionization test the, the ionization test is based upon the fact that the uh, the positive uh, legs of any erasable gold package will ionize mass white or colored whereas all four legs of an unerasable gold package will ionize a mass black and the negative legs of erasable gold packages will also ionize a mass black so all one has to do is to simply feed one wants to test a gold package to find if it's erasable using the ionization test once it simply feeds the the floods uh, um, any old mass in the universe just flood it, flood any old mass in your mind with the postulates the legs one by one the legs of the gold package if all four legs ionize the mass black then it's an unerasable gold package the, 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 the decision is final it's not because I say so it's just, a, it's just a factor of the universe it's just the way this universe is constructed the, ionize, the ionization test is a much simpler test than the, 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 the test that's given in the, the writer but unfortunately a person has to be in fairly good case shape to use the ionization test it's only when they've been on been at level 5 for a while that they can use it the idea of, of putting postulates into masses is, is real to them but they can use the ionization test prior to that they must use the test given in the write-up to, to actually judge if the judge if the um, to blank leg of the, the package to be tested is opposed to the to be known leg of the basic package they have to just think about that well it's a valid test it's a good test it got me by it saved my life that test did. it's a good test but the ionization test is a better test but again it's not available it's not available to the person until the person is well into level 5 not because, it's not a technical failure this again it's only because of the, the rather poor case shape of, 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 of human beings human beings in our society in the last 2,000 years so have spent more time dealing with the mind and, and researching the subject of the human mind and less time researching black boxes and, and, and so forth out that way we would have a we would have already have a have a large body of, of knowledge of the human psyche extent on the planet and uh, people will be in better case shape and uh, these things would be much easier you see but we haven't got that. We've got a, we've got a, we've got a society that's quietly going mad or noisily going mad, and they 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 need a they need a need psychotherapy. They need therapy. They don't believe they need it, but they do. They sure as hell need it. There's no quick fixes over that way. They run out of quick fixes over that way. And um, their survival is dependent upon their sanity. It always has been. Their survival is dependent upon their sanity, and uh, they're, they're, they're not becoming. Our society is not becoming more sane. It's becoming less sane. I've only the other morning I was heard on the radio. There, I heard um, I were talking about American society, and the chap he said that uh, one thing about the Americans. He said. Um, 
he said there they are he said they've got uh, two percent of the american population are winning and and, and they're all billionaires the other 90 98 percent of, of the society are losers and uh, they haven't got they haven't got much at all he says and the whole society are armed with the teeth now he said the what the yanks can't see is that that's a recipe for disaster <laughs> Well, the man who said that is quite right, but the Yank can't see it. They still persist in, in running their society on the basis of 2% winners, 98% losers, and everyone carrying a gun. Well, it's a recipe for disaster, isn't it? <laughs> you see that? But you, only if you're sane can you see it. If you happen to be fixated into the, into the goals to exploit and the goals to profit, and they're all unerasable goals. If you happen to be fixated on those goals, like the Yanks are, then you never get your society straight, you see. The society just runs itself into the ground. They can't see it. But people standing off can look at America and, and see the faults of America, but the Americans can't. You know, they have a, a violent uh, riots in... in, in in, in their towns, in Los Angeles, they have riots, you know, and it didn't do anything for them. All, all it meant was that uh, they had to get down and, and photograph the riots and get the riots on the TV screen so everyone could see the riots. They could all stand around and say how bad it all was, but it never occurred to them that that was a signal to do something about their society. No, that's quite unreal to them. The only thing they understand is that is their, is their, their postulates of their of their unerasable gold packages that they're stuck in. They've got to make a profit. They've got to exploit, you see. They're stuck in it. They can't get out of it. They can't look outside of it. Which is the awful thing about the person getting stuck in an unerasable ghost package. The dreadful thing is that the person can't think outside of it in the end. They get stuck into it. They're so stuck in the unerasable ghost package. And it's killing them. And they can't stop killing themselves. It's like the alcoholic who's drinking himself to death. He's on the same he's on the same skid. He's on the same skid row. He can't stop drinking. Yet the drink is killing him. Yet he can't stop drinking. Well, that's a, a perfectly good analogy of a person who's stuck, dramatising, stuck in the legs of an unerasable ghost package. The girl's package is killing him, but he's totally addicted to this way of life. He's totally addicted to the legs of this girl's package, and he can't get out of it. Even if you show him a way out, he can't get out. He can't get out of it. His only way out of it is to dig himself out with something like Tron. He can get himself out that way. He sees enough people around him digging themselves out of their problems using Tron, and eventually he'll try it too. And he realises that it does work. He doesn't have to do it this way. He doesn't have to be in this gold package, which is killing him. You see that? Now, that's the philosophy of Tron. On an educational basis, we simply have to discover the unerasable gold packages, and we simply educate children at school, tell them that... Uh, and give them the technical reasons why. But... Um, you can't get involved with this activity. It's no good, tell the kids, it's no good going around and, and, and hating. No good going around and destroying. It's no good going around and, and exploiting. It's no good going around and profiting. All these are unerasable things. They'll kill you. We can't run a society that way. And we can prove it. And here it is. And the teacher writes it all up on the blackboard. He teaches them from. There it all is. The children can test it in their own minds and see it's all there. You see that? That's the philosophy on an educational level. You could teach this to people. It could be taught at schools. Then our society would start to come off it. See, at the moment we have... We're like the person who believes that Axiom, in Axiom 31. We live in a society where people don't believe there's any... They believe that just goodness and badness are a matter of opinion. They don't believe there's such things as dangerous activities. That, that lead to the uh, that lead to the graveyard, except the most obvious things like like shooting yourself or jumping off a cliff. And everyone knows that they're harmful, but they don't. Um, the businessman doesn't realise how harmful his goal to exploit is, which is the basis of his business activity. I mean, business, as it's run in our society at this time, 
Christ business doesn't have to be run this way but business is run on the basis that uh, the bottom line of business is to make a profit and profit is, ach is achieved by exploitation that's the way it's run on this planet in the western society, the western world at this time they, they call that business it's a strange and peculiar variation on this subject of business it's based upon those two postulates of, of, uh, of profit and exploitation the bottom line is profit, and profit is achieved by exploitation. And both of those gold packages are unerasable. Uh, now, it's not immediately obvious to a businessman that the problems in his life are brought about by the fact that he's, he's operating upon unerasable gold packages. It's insidious. It's very insidious. It's only as his life progresses that he realises that uh, there's something wrong with his life. But he can't see what it is. He doesn't know enough about life. He doesn't know about the gold packages. He doesn't know that the purposes he's running on are non-life purposes. He doesn't know enough about life. He doesn't know Trom. If he knew Trom, he wouldn't do it. He'd rather, you know, he'd do anything but do what he's doing. He realised the insidiousness of it, the danger of it, the awfulness of, of, of what he's working himself into. And so he, his health collapses after a number of years. You know, it all his life falls apart. You know, it, it all comes apart around his ears. And he gets into becomes an alcoholic. He takes up drugs. He tries everything to try and make his life bearable. And it just gets worse and worse and worse. It never occurs to him. He can't put his finger on it. And the trouble is that he's, he, he's all his trouble stem from the fact that he's basing his life upon profit and exploitation. And they're only raisable goals packages. They're non-life activities. The longer he persists with them, the more he's killing himself. All he's got to do is stop doing those two things. If they're the things that, I, that he's doing. He's only got to stop doing them and his life will start to improve immediately. <laughs> you see that? But he can't see that. You can't tell him. Because he's got a whole mass of uh, rationalisations and justifications for his activity, you see that? For his life, for his, for his profit and his exploitation and his business. You see, it's all, it's all, it's all uh, heavily screened and it, it's all built into his psyche. And he's got a thousand reasons why and a thousand justifications for everything he does. Even though everything he does is killing him. <laughs> That's the problem when the person's in to an unerasable ghost package. Now that's what we're up against. Now that is the. This, we're now talking about the philosophy of Tron. This is the philosophy of Tron. What we've got to do, and people have got to understand this. They won't really understand until they get to level five. Then it gets so awfully real to them. So terribly real. They realise that all the awful things. I mean, when I got to it and it, it hit me, I realised that all the terrible things that when my life fell apart, all the times when my life ever fell apart was when I got involved with unerasable ghost packages. While I was while I was engaged with erasable ghost packages, it was good roads and good weather. Life was fun. Life was joy. Life was joy. Life is a joy. But when I got, every time I got involved with unerasable goals packages and got into those, life became serious, dull, apathetic, miserable, black, apathy, <laughs> you name it, it, it all fell apart. You see that? And that's what's happened to people. And that's what's happening to our planet. We have the technology in Tron to do something about it. We have the philosophy to do something about it. And the philosophy lies in level five, the subject of the erasable and unerasable ghost packages. Because these are the purposes of life. These all of these all of these ghost packages consist of purposes. And life is only consists of purposes. Life as we understand it. There's just life and purposes, you see. There's nothing else in this universe but life and purposes. There's the, there's, there's the life purposes and there's the non-life purposes at the top, at the top, at the highest level. And you can play, you can play, you can play the game of life forever with great fun and great enjoyment as long as you stay on the life purposes. But once you get off the life purposes and get into the non-life purposes, the, which is the unerasable goals packages, 
you're on the slippery slope to the graveyard now that isn't important there couldn't be any more important data to our society than this data that I'm giving you it's all there in Tron it's all there at level 5A and level 5B in the subject of the erasable and the unerasable ghost packages it's such a simple datum it's such a great simplicity but it leads when it's applied it's the difference between a society that's rational and sane and can flourish or a society that is eventually going to destroy itself there's that difference, it's that important our society at the moment on this planet is sliding into the further and further into the unerasable goals packages life is becoming more and more desperate more and more desperate you can p point your finger at any number of causes of this you can say it's because uh, the decline of religion, the decline of Christianity yes that might be a part of it it's because of the rising birth rate and that we've got too many people on the planet yes that's a part of it it can be due to this, it can be lack of food, it can be due to any number of things it can be due to the o holes in the ozone layer, yes that can be a part of it it's declining number of fish in the sea yes that can be a part of it all these things can be a part of the problem but essentially what we have in effect is that mankind is sliding more and more into unerasable goals packages he's basing his life upon unerasable goals packages and these are non-survival non they're non-life goals packages and they're going to destroy him and destroy the society in which he lives he's got to have to stop doing it when he stops doing it, life will improve. You see that? He doesn't have to. The first thing he has to solve is get these get his purposes right. Get, get the purposes right. Then he can get the environment right. Mankind always tries to do it backwards. He tries to. He always goes in for the fix over that way. He says, "Well, I can be sane and rational, but I've got to get the environment fixed up first. No, 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 no. You don't have to fix up the environment to become sane. You can become sane without fixing the environment. <laughs> you only need to apply a workable to psychotherapy, and you can become sane. And you don't have to fix the environment in order to, to apply a workable psychotherapy. Anyone can sit down and use Tron without having to go and fix up the environment. You see that?" <laughs> It's, a, it's just a mankind is a great expert of solving problems over that way but he never looks inwards this is the weakness of the ape the, the human ape is that he's a he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a he's a cheerful little extrovert you might say he's always looking over that way and solving he's a wizard of black boxes solving solving problems technical problems over that way and he says we get all these problems solved and uh, all these labour saving devices and get all these computers going and marvellous things going and we solve all this and solve all that and life will get easy and everyone will be happy and everyone's, everyone will be fine and, and the society will run, run beautifully and it doesn't work it doesn't work the more he solves over that way the worse his society is getting this is because it's only because he's totally neglecting the inner world the world of the postulates he doesn't know about those he's never been interested in those he doesn't know about these things and they're catching up with him you see that's why why is happening to our society he can solve the problem can be solved it is solvable by simply addressing the problem in terms of the postulates it's not too late to do that it's never too late to do it you can always change your mind about a postulate you see it's never too late to change your mind. See, that can always work with the postulate. It's not going to cost... So there is the philosophy of Trom. This is the philosophy that differentiates Trom from Scientology. It all boils down to this subject of the first part of Axiom 31 of Scientology, doesn't it? You all get round to that, that first bit. There is such a thing as good behaviour and there is such a thing sorry there is such a thing as goodness and there is such a thing as badness <laughs> there is such a thing as a dangerous postulate in this universe there is such a thing as a non-dangerous postulate there is such a thing as a life postulate there is such a thing as a non-life postulate that is the message of Trump 
And that is the message. That is that is the basic philosophy of Tron. Is to be found in the in the gold packages at level five. Now this material can be expanded out enormously by people. I, I won't be able to do this. To, to, to carry on the full ramifications of the expansion of this material I'm going to rely upon others to, to complete this work but it only needs a few to grab this material and run with it younger men than me, younger people than me to grab this material and run with it and it's still not too late we can do something about this do something about this planet we have the data now in the upper levels of Tron to do something about it and it's never too late to start doing it. Well that's all I want to say on the subject of the philosophy of Trump. Thank you very much. Well I see we've got some space left on this tape so um, I've decided to, uh, to usefully fill it and uh, introduce you to a piece of uh, information called the loop. Now the loop is a uh, piece of information which gives a relationship between a postulate and what that postulate permits to be possible and what that postulate permits to be impossible. Now the, the, the first thing you should know about the loop is that it's not peculiar to this universe. It's uh, this is a general this is a general principle that will be applicable to to any universe but it's certainly applicable to this universe now what it amounts to is, is this that um, if you know uh, if you have a postulate you can deduce from the postulate what is possible in the universe in terms of that postulate and knowing what is possible in terms of that postulate in the universe, you can deduce what is impossible in the universe in terms of that postulate. And, now note the next bit, knowing what is impossible in terms of that postulate in the universe, you can deduce the postulate. <laughs> so it's a loop. It's like having A, B and C, and uh, if you know A, you can deduce B, and if you know B, you can deduce C, and if you know C, you can deduce A. You, you've got the loop. The, the, it's like a snake going round and being connected up. The tail end of the snake is connected up to the mouth of the snake. The whole thing's connected up in a circle. That's why we call it a loop. Now, it's very easy to prove logically that when we have a situation like that where B is a valid deduction from A and C is a valid deduction from B and A is a um, A is a valid deduction from C that, um, that A and B and C are all identical to each other in other words that A equals B equals C equals A the whole lot are identical one to the other it's it very easy to prove this logically I won't bother to prove it on this tape. You, you can find the proof in any logical textbook. It's, a, it's an easy proof. Now, I'll give you a, uh, a very, very, very simple example of this. Um, let, let's, let's, in, in, let's, let's consider a particular loop. Um, let's say that we have the uh, we enter the, a particular loop. We discover that um, we discover that. Uh, all crows are birds. Now, that is the postulate. We've got the postulate now. That's the relationship. That's the postulate. All crows are birds. Now, from this, we can we can quite validly deduce that um, it's impossible for the class of creatures that are crows and non-birds to exist. So that that that's our that's our first deduction. We've now now deduced the impossible. What 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 that postulate all crows are birds just what that postulate makes impossible in our universe you see and knowing that uh, this this uh, class of creatures that are both crows and non-birds doesn't exist in the universe that so the postulate has made it impossible we can now deduce what is possible in the universe in terms of this postulate well that that, uh, that, that turns out to be um, we can either have uh, 
we can either have birds in the universe or non-crows in the universe or we can have both and that, uh, that, that tells us what's possible in terms of our, of our postulate now in, in that particular example it, we haven't really learned an awful lot but let's go. Let's get very, very fundamental. Let's take from very, very, uh, very, very basic, uh, very, very basic postulates in the in, in this particular universe that we, we, we all inhabit. Um, we know in this universe that uh, that um, a thing cannot both exist and not exist simultaneously. We know that. We, we, we call that the law of the impossible in the universe. And we know that, uh, I've already mentioned that this is a, on, an earlier, on an earlier supplementary lecture, that this is a valid deduction from the basic law upon which this universe is, is constructed. That this idea that a thing cannot both exist and not exist simultaneously. So here we have a, 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 an element in a loop. You say, ah, you recognise this as an element in a loop. We say, okay, let's find the rest of the loop. There's two more elements in this loop. Let's find the rest of the elements in the loop. Okay, well, now we've got the impossible. It should be possible now to uh, easily to, to deduce that what's possible. Yes, well, what is possible in this universe is that a thing either exists or it doesn't exist. That's possible. You see, that, 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 that exhausts the possibilities. So now we have the impossible thing cannot both exist and not exist simultaneously. That, that's the law of the that's the that, that that's the law of the impossible. Now we have the, the, the law of the possible that a thing either exists or it doesn't exist. All right, that's two out of the three members of the loop. Well, what is the third member of the loop? The postulate. Well, <laughs> the postulate here is that. Uh, <laughs> let X be the, the, the thing that exists if the thing exists we, we call it X well X equals X <laughs> if X equals X that's the third part of the loop now these identifications remember, I've already said these each element of the loop three elements in the loop is identical to every to the other two elements all, all parts of the loop are identical to to the remainder of the loop. Now, this identification is not a false identification, it's a true identification. So, the, the, the postulate that uh, um, X equals X, which is obviously true in this universe, all X's are X's, there's no doubt about that, that, that all cats are cats, and, and, uh, and all kings are kings, and all coal heavers are coal heavers, you know, all X's are X's, it's true. But what isn't immediately obvious is that to say that uh, x equals x, that to say that, um, that x cannot both exist and not exist simultaneously is just another way of saying that x equals x. Now that isn't obvious, is it? But it's true because of the loop. So when we say that x equals x, another way of saying x equals x is to say that... Uh, X cannot both exist and not exist simultaneously. And another way to say that X equals X, or or to say that X cannot both exist and not exist simultaneously, is to say that uh, X either exists or it doesn't exist. So, again, you see, that, that now we're into something useful, aren't we? Now we're really discovering something. It's not obvious that those three expressions are actually... It's the same, mean the same thing. Are simply different ways of saying the same thing. But it is so, I can assure you, because of the identification in the loop and the fact that the identification is a true identification. Now, this loop um, will appear, uh, I mentioned it at this stage, but we won't be using it at, at this stage. I won't be discussing it any further at this stage. But the, the loop will appear in a later supplementary lecture when we take up the subject of um, the anatomy of insanity. You'll find this loop turning up again. And uh, so you see that it, you'll discover that it does have some, some tremendous practical uses, this does. But I'm giving it to you at this stage, mainly to fill up this, uh, partly to fill up this uh, little blank in this, 
this tape that we've got here, and also to give you time to think about it, to to uh, to, to, to get your mind wrapped around this idea, this connection between a postulate and the subject of the possible and the subject of the impossible. And to see that there is there is a very, very real connection between these three things, which is true in all universes. Just to, to, to prepare your mind for this idea. OK, that's all I want to say on the subject. I'd better get off the subject now before this tape runs off the end of the spool.